So y'all, I struggled hard. We all know that Trump had this terrible train wreck of an interview yesterday with the NABJ, the National Association of Black Journalists. It was terrible. What was posted here on the Twitter for us it was a 34 minute interview and it was hard. I was struggling to get with, um, get through it because he was rambling so much. I stuck with the interview so that I can give my thoughts, but I'm gonna start off with this article. Trump's racism at the NABJ was revolting. It was all calculated for his MAGA fan base. Everything that he was saying, he was barely answering the questions. He was all over the place, but that was basically for his already MAGA fans. Um, because who is he really appealing to? Donald Trump thrives on attention like plants feed off sunlight. So consider how disconcerting it must have been for our former president to watch our current VP, Kamala Harris, seize the national spotlight in the opening 10 days of her campaign for the White House. Trump, left in the shadows, fumed as he was supplanted, whining that Fox News was airing Harris campaign rallies. He'd rather be reviled than ignored. That explains what happened Wednesday when Trump ranted through a racist tantrum while speaking to the National Association of Black Journalists, the NABJ, in Chicago, outside the protective bubble of his cheering fans at his pep talkies, like the one he held Wednesday evening and right wing talking heads telling him how great he is. Trump lashed out. So predictable, he craved attention. He didn't care how he got it. A common theme in both his appearances on Wednesday, Trump's racist remarks about Harris were just the first half of his day. Compare that with how Trump reveled in the adoration of his overwhelmingly white fans just a few hours later at a rally in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Thousands of people cheered while he rambled through the same old stories about immigration and crime and crime and immigration with the warning of economic apocalypse here and there. They didn't care that Trump spoke in bumper sticker slogans, never offering any detail about how he would reverse everything that he sees as wrong about America. They didn't mind that Trump often sounded like he was still challenging President Joe Biden, who dropped his bid for reelection on July 21st and endorsed Harris. He kept coming back to Joe Biden. It was wild. He couldn't like he couldn't move past that. <laughs> And it says, what a difference an audience makes. Trump's racism on full display. At NABJ, Trump's blatant racism and disdain for talented Black women left me appalled. Journalists at the NABJ convention had the temerity to accurately recount for Trump's for Trump his past statements, smearing and mocking Black politicians and journalists, and then asked him to explain why Black voters should support him. From the start, Trump was angry and off balance, lashing out at NBC's Rachel Scott for asking the question in such a horrible manner. So here is Rachel Scott, the woman who kicked off the whole thing. She made the fireworks happen from the very beginning. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> You don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. And, and he was taken aback, like, how dare she say such things in such a horrible manner? Trump, of course, didn't even try to answer the question. He was there for attention. Who cares about questions? Well, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, first question. 
you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. And I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for uh, black workers and black entrepreneurs. I've done so much, and you know, and I say this, uh, Historically, black colleges and universities were out of money. They were stone cold broke. And I saved them, and I gave them long-term financing, and nobody else was doing it. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here, and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said, you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom, and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I, would love I think it's a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President Johnson who signed answer. the Voting Rights Act? And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. I let really me, do. Let I me just ask a but Trump knows it's not enough to just attack journalists. He's done this long enough to understand that it takes something absolutely outlandish to grab headlines. While Harris is closing in on him in swing state polling, race baiting in front of a professional organization that represents people of a particular race was his go-to move. He used the NABJ's platform to ridiculously claim that Harris, the first black, South Asian, and female vice president of the United States, somehow previously presented as being of Indian heritage, but then shifting to presenting as black. Is she Indian or is she black? Trump asked before adding his lie because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn, and then she became a black person. Harris's father immigrated from Jamaica while her mother came to America from India. Her racial identity has been well known and publicly established during her political career as a DA, California's Attorney General, in the U.S. Senate, and as VP. Trump clearly calculated that the revulsion his racism would evoke at the NABJ was worth the delight his base would find in it all. So this is Kamala on Twitter. She said, this afternoon, Donald Trump spoke to the NABJ. It was the same old show. Let me just say the American people deserve better than Donald Trump's divisiveness and disrespect. Very classy from um, VP Harris. But then we have Laura Loomer. She responded to Ms. Harris. Why are you lying, though? You aren't black. The American people deserve more than a race baiter who lies about their heritage. Who do you think you are? The non-black female Barack Hussein Obama? B word, we have your birth certificate. So Laura Loomer highlights Berkeley and Donald and that Donald is from his birthplace is Jamaica. I don't know if they know this, but Jamaica is still part of the country that had Africans that were dropped off during the slave trade. I don't know if they know that. <laughs> That's how black people got all around the world. That's why Josh says, is Jamaica in Africa? Learn something new today. How does one become African-American if born in Jamaica? Our public school system is completely failing these people because they do not know that Africans were dropped off in multiple places during the slave trade. That's why little big dog says, oh, you're slow, slow. Even some Republicans were taken aback by many of his comments. I'm going to end it here. I do want to know what you thought about some of the clips that you've seen. Could you make it through the whole 34 minute interview? I made it through. Um, it was definitely hard, but I want to know your thoughts on it. Go ahead and weigh in. Here's a little extra clip of him answering or not answering questions about the January 6th failed insurrection. President, I would love to ask you about January 6th. Uh, you have called yourself the candidate of law and order. Yeah. When Time Magazine asked you if you would consider pardoning all the rioters, you said, yes, absolutely. Sure. You called them yeah. patriots. 
140 police officers were assaulted that day. Their injuries included broken bones, at least one officer lost an eye, one had two cracked ribs, two smashed spinal discs, another had a stroke. Were the people who assaulted those 140 officers, including those I just mentioned, patriots who deserve pardons? Well, let me bring it back to modern day. Like about five days ago, we had an attack on the Capitol, a horrible attack on the Capitol. Uh, you saw the people that were protesting and spraying these incredible monuments, bells, lions, all these magnificent limestone and granite with red paint, red spray paint that will never actually come off, especially on the limestone. It will never, I'm a builder, I know about this stuff. It'll never, you'll see it in a hundred years from now. They viciously attacked our government. They fought with police. They fought with them much more openly than I saw on January 6th. What's going to happen to those people? What's going to happen to the people in Portland that destroyed that city? But, sir, my question city? is on those... What's going to happen to the people that tried to... My question is on those rioters bring, who assaulted officers. Me. You have to ask, Would you pardon those people? What's going to happen? Oh, absolutely, I would. You if would pardon innocent, those... If they're innocent, I would pardon them. They've been convicted. And, by the way, the Supreme Court just under... <laughs> Well, they were convicted by a very, a very tough system. They were, how come the people that tried to burn down Minneapolis, how come the people that took over a large percentage of Seattle, how come nothing happened to them? How come the but people sir, that- But, we're talking about people that were people, seen no, no, beating no. officers we're talking with flagpoles, dragging them down the stairs. They're on they video. Have you seen that really? video, sir? Oh, really? Well, they you shot- would pardon those, You would pardon those rioters? They shot a young lady in the face who was protesting, they shot her in the face. You know, nobody died that day. You do know that. But